my favorite card projects are ones that look aged or vintage. There are quite a few different techniques you can use to help your card projects look distressed or aged or vintage. And today I wanna to share some of those with you. Let's take a look. Here are three card projects in particular I've created in the past that look distressed or vintage in some way. And I just love how these turn out. I feel like they, they help like bring up warm, cozy feelings of memories and things like that. So uh, I wanted to share some techniques for how you can create cards like this as well. And th there are several techniques. I'm gonna share more cards at the end that I've used some of these techniques on. We're gonna create three while we are here together. So let's take a look at some of these things. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as we go through here is that I've used a lot of black and whites and neutral colors. Now you don't have to do that to create vintage looking cards, uh, but you will notice that's one of the things that the cards we're creating together, they are either black and white or have browns and other neutrals mixed in. Now, something else that can be nice is natural textures or at least some texture mixed in. So you will probably notice that as well. Now we are going to get started with the first card and here are some pieces and parts I have already created. There are several products. I'll show you the couple of products I'm using here today and then you'll know where these things are coming from. I have a stamp set that I'm pulling two texture stamps from. I love this set. Uh, I love these distressed words here. And then the splatter stamp we're going to use as well. We're using two different embossing folders, but I'm actually, I'm gonna show you four. These are my four that I love for aged and older looking projects. Brick and mortar, we'll create a project with this one. Time Worn Type, that one as well. Merry Melody is this lovely, it looks like sheet music. And you're gonna see some cards at the end that are just beautiful made with this one. And then I love this wood grain one, it's called Timber. Then what I'm using to finish my cards off is this beautiful framed florets bundle. I thought this frame right here it, it looks vintage, right? So I decided I wanted to use this set to finish these cards. So let's get started and take a look. Now, for each one of these, I've done a little bit of prep. So for this one, I just took a piece of vanilla cardstock. I stamped that word stamp from the Quiet Meadow set. I stamped it several times across here with crumb cake ink. So something like this if you have any distressed words like this that you can put in the background that's a great technique to make your cards appear to be aged now i'm going to show you some other things you can do as well and this is one of them and this may be hard for some of you but this is something i like to do sometimes and when i do it i'm usually really glad that i did and it is crumpling up my paper this may seem heartbreaking, I'm not sure, to crumple up part of one of your amazing works of art, but you know, it adds something extra and I think it's pretty neat when we get done with this. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to get the edges crumpled up, so you can just kind of push those in with your thumb. And you can do this as much or as little as you like. The more you do it, the more it is actually going to shrink your piece of paper and it won't be quite as large as you started with. So you may wanna start with a piece that's a little bit bigger than you want it to be when you're done. You can always trim it down if you need to. The more you do it, the more it's going to shrink in and the more it's also going to soften. And you can actually get these to where they almost appear like fabric or cloth if you really work on them. Okay, so I have this crumpled now. And what I wanna do next is something you will see on several of the cards, I'll show you at the end, and all three of the cards that we're working on here together. And we're gonna use our blending brush. And this is early espresso ink. I love to use my blending brushes to add an age effect to my projects. Now sometimes, a lot of times, I don't do the crumpling. And you'll see what it looks like on these others here in a couple of minutes, where I am blending, but I'm not necessarily, and I did not do the crumpling. 
Uh, this is a beautiful effect to add over embossing when you use your embossing folders. But you can also use it on flat paper. And I will have examples of that where I didn't use any other techniques. I just used the blending brush and the ink to add some color around the edges, okay? So isn't that neat? I just, I think this is so neat. I love to do this type of technique. So now that we have this crumpled and blended, let's go ahead and finish this particular card. Now, when I started this piece and this piece of early espresso both measured four inches by five and a quarter inches. You will notice that this one appears to be slightly smaller now and it will fit inside and that early espresso will show around it as a mat. When you do this, you wanna make sure you use plenty of adhesive to hold it down now that it has all that texture Oh my goodness, I just think this is fantastic. And then I created this frame with that frame florets bundle, stamp the flowers and the greeting on here. So we'll add this over top and we will pop up the little frame. Now on this oval right here, can you tell that I use my blending brushes around the edge just a little bit to darken it around the edge? and it should appear to be a little bit lighter in the center. Like I said, that's a technique I do a lot when I do projects like this. Now I wanted to pop up this outer piece of the frame. I really like this as a neat die. It, I ran it through one time and it cut out the inner piece and this outer piece. And I wanted to pop this piece up. Now I did use my blending brushes a little bit with, with a little bit more ink on this frame. So hopefully you can see that, but here I'll hold it up a little bit closer and you can appreciate some of that color and texture, hopefully. Okay, let's move on to card number two. Bring this in, show you what we've created so far. And on this one, I used the time-worn type embossing folder in the background. So I embossed my white cardstock. After it was embossed, I used my blending brush with some black ink and I went over it to get that lovely distressed look. Now, after I did that, I used the stamps are from that frame florets bundle that I showed you. I actually, you may want to stamp your greeting first before you emboss and do the other. I did stamp afterwards. It can be a challenge once you have your texture on your paper, but I used my Stamparatus to stamp several times right there in the same spot and it worked just fine. When I stamped the flowers, I stamped those by hand. I did not want to stamp those multiple times. I actually wanted to get that distressed look on them. So if you emboss your paper and then stamp afterwards, that's going to help get kind of a distressed look because it won't stamp perfectly in most cases because of that texture on the paper. So you may be able to see where it didn't stamp perfectly when I stamped those flowers. Okay, now that this has been embossed and blended, what I wanna do is add some splatters to it. This can be a nice technique to add some age, make things look a little bit older. This is that splatter stamp from the Quiet Meadow set. And I'll have links in the video description below to any of these products if you want to take a look. So splatters or any other texture stamp that you may have are ones that you can get so much use out of in your stamping. They're really nice. You can create backgrounds. You can make things look, look aged, like what I'm doing here. You can really do a lot with them. So I'll do this several times and you'll notice I'm stamping a few different times. So I'm stamping once to get the dark ink. And then as I stamp a few more times, I'm getting those faded splatters. I like that. In, in most cases, I like that effect better than just stamping with a dark ink. Okay, so now that we've done that, I do want to show you one other way you can get splatters, which was really fun 
and I do really like to do this sometimes, especially on my more artistic looking projects. But what you'll need is a water painter and a little bit of ink. So this is my Memento Black ink refill. What I'm going to do is squeeze the barrel here of my brush until I get some water down there on my acrylic block and mix some of that ink in. You can blend as much as you like to get a light or dark color. Then what you want is quite a bit of liquid in the tip. And once you have this, you wanna make sure you've protected your work surface, especially in front of you. If there's a wall in front of you or anything, this can lead to splatters in places you may not want them, uh, mostly in front of you. So what you wanna do is just hit the brush against your hand. And as you do this, I don't know if you can see, but I'm getting some little splatters all over my project. So if you like a little bit more natural look than using a stamp or if you don't have a stamp, this is a way you can add those splatters to your project. Now I've kind of run out of water, so I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more here. Here I saw some more water come down in that tip. You can squeeze until you almost see a drop there ready to, ready to fall. And then here you can hopefully see those falling onto the project. And I did end up with a few in front of me here on my work surface. So that's a fun way to add some splatters as well. Okay, now that we have this, let's go ahead and finish this particular card and use my chamois real quick to wipe up those splatters. So I've prepared this as the black card base. I added some of the silver specialty metallic paper to this. Shiny may not necessarily always go with vintage, but because this one, it's, it's not completely shiny. It's got that texture on it. I think you can see, I thought this would be a really nice addition to this black and white card. So we'll add that. And then I prepared this frame that I am just going to lay straight over top. I decided to stamp right on that card, lay this over top. When I have detailed die cuts, it depends on the project and what the die cut looks like, how I choose to adhere it. But a lot of times I just add little dots of my green bottle glue. I love this stuff, it holds so well even if I only have glue in a few places. And I'll let that sit there for just a second. And if you let the glue dry for just a few seconds and then put it on, it usually holds right away and you don't have to stand there and hold it. I'll mention this, I wanted to pick out some embellishments that would look nice with these aged looking card. So I pulled out these rustic metallic adhesive back dots. Let's put a few of these onto my first card and then we can add some of these to the other projects as well. So I've got my take your pick tool here. I really like to use this to pick up my dots and then I don't have to do it by hand. I like to put those on lightly and then once I make, once I've decided, oh yeah, I do like where those are, then I press down a little bit harder. Uh, if you just put them on lightly at first, you can always move them around if you need to. So we've got that one done. Let's put our frame onto our second card. I think this die is just such a beautiful one. I love that it has the several different oval frames included that you can use. So since I let that sit for a minute, most of that is holding. This part is popping up just a touch. I'll press that back down and I would imagine it is probably going to stay this time. So on this one, let's add, I'll just add some of these gems. I would say at the corners of my frame, but ovals don't have corners, do they? 
one on each edge. And here is our finished second card. I, I tell you what, I said this at the beginning, and like I said, these distressed looking cards are some of my absolute favorites. Okay, let's get on to our third project. We're gonna do a couple of new techniques I haven't shown on the other cards. So what I have here, I have this cardstock. I started with crumb cake cardstock. I embossed it with the brick and mortar embossing folder. It's one of my favorite embossing folders and it's better than, I think basically every other brick embossing folder I've seen because it has several different layers of raised bricks. So you can see the darker ones, those are the, the darkest ones. Those are the ones that stick up the furthest. Uh, so you have those different layers. And when I blended over this with my blending brush, those ones that are raised the most, those picked up the most of that dark ink. So I embossed it, I blended it. Now we are going to, we're gonna start doing some, uh, some home projects in our, not really, uh, in our craft room. So I have some sandpaper. This is leftover sandpaper from something that we worked on around here. Uh, this is actually a sanding block. You don't have to have a sanding block, but it can help. I, it was from a project and it's not really rough anymore, but I kept it because I can wrap my sandpaper around it and it just makes it easier to hold. So I am just going to sand over my cardstock. And I'm not gonna sand over the whole thing. Uh, if you decide to play around with this, of course you can decide whether you wanna sand over an entire piece or just do some edges. But this is just a really fun way to add a distressed look to your project. Now you may end up with a bit of dust, a bit of sanding debris here. So I'll brush that off. Then I want to show this to you up close because I think it creates such a neat effect. So you can see the scuffs over here. And depending on the color of cardstock you use and whether you've embossed it or not, whether you've blended some ink over top, you're going to get different effects. I did this a little bit ago just on some plain white cardstock that I hadn't done anything to. And it created a really neat effect on that as well. So you can do some sanding if you want. And then one more thing we can do to add a little age or distress is to run around the edge of this with some nice sharp scissors, okay? These are my favorite paper snips. I love these scissors. They are the best for fussy cutting when you need to get into tight corners and you need to, you know, cut between the leaves or something detailed like that. Abs oh, and ribbon. Uh, if you struggle to cut ribbon with your scissors, get a pair of these, you will no longer struggle. But this is one of my older pairs. I keep a really good pair that's for my ribbon and for special projects. Uh, this is one of my older pairs that I'm doing this with. But I'm just running around the edge with that blade. And hopefully you can see this. It's just roughed up that edge uh, in a really nice way. So I have a little bit more debris. Let's get that out of the way and let's finish this card. So I have an early espresso base and you'll see some flowers here that I have created. Created those with that framed florets bundle. I stamped them with early espresso ink and then I colored them in with my water painters that I just showed you with the splattering. Now, typically if I'm going to be water painting something, I want to use stays on ink to do my stamping so that when I add that water and the color, the ink doesn't bleed. But because we're doing aged and distressed here, I thought it would be kind of neat if that ink did bleed some. So I stamped with the early espresso ink, used my water painter, added some color. I used balmy blue and pear pizzazz mixed with some water to add the colors in. And let me show you a difference in how much water I used. On this one, I just used as much water as I needed basically to cover those areas. Then do you see this blurred area right here? Uh, I used a little bit extra water 
in that area. And I think that's kind of a neat effect for these aged vintage looking cards. So if you want to do that, basically you just need more water, more water that's gonna sit there and pool for a little bit. And I am working on grabbing my water painter. My one is still full of black ink. Oh, here it is. Here's my smaller one. So I'm gonna squeeze this until a little bit of extra water comes out. And I'm just gonna dab that around on that flower right there. And as we finish this card, you may be able to see that area blurring, kind of like this area over here in that area a little bit, okay? So oh, this is so fun with these rough edges. I already put some dimensionals on the back. We'll go ahead and add these to the corners. Like I said, I think this framed florets bundle is just such a neat one. It has those nice frames like I showed. But then it also has some of these beautiful flowers that I've used on these projects. So there's that. I created a small bow. Let's add our little bow. We can add a few of those gems. And then I have several other card samples to show you. I have some of these distressed projects I've created in the past. And then if this fitting florets bundle is one that you're enjoying seeing some ideas from, I have several ideas of other cards you can create with it that do not look aged or vintage in the least bit. Uh, just to give you another, another idea of some different styles of cards you can create. So we'll add a few of these metallic dots. Then I'll get these other samples to show you. Okay, and my bow isn't staying stuck quite yet, but let's take a look at these three we just created. Here is this one. Now I do still have a wet spot up here that will dry and appear to look a lot like the spot right down here, here in a few minutes. But can you see that rough edge and the sanded areas? I think that is fantastic. Here is the time-worn type embossing folder one with the splatters and the blending. And last but not least, the one with the stamping of the words in the background and that crumpling technique, okay? So let's take a look at a few more things to hopefully inspire some creativity. And many of these cards are ones I've done tutorials on in the past. Here is one that it was very simple to create, but just because I added a blending brushes on the background, just around the edges for that brownish, the, the aged look, uh, I thought this one was a good one to show that you could just add some of that color around the edges, create your card as normal, and you are going to have an aged effect. Here is one. Oh, I just love this set with these seashells. This was so fun to create. And I just blended a little bit around, just around the tag on this one, uh, but I thought it helped it kind of blend, blend in and everything coordinate on that card with the neutral colors in the background. Here are a couple that I did that crumpling technique where I crumpled it. And then this one, I don't think I did any blending over the top, uh, but this one I did with some of that black ink and just think it adds a lot to something rather than just using that flat paper as usual. Here are a couple with that Mary Melody embossing folder I mentioned that I love to use on projects like this. Use it and then do some blending over top with some ink. Just beautiful projects. This Christmas card has been a favorite of some of the tu tutorials I've shared. Here are a couple with this lovely sunflower set. This is one I received from a friend, but it ha it's similar. It has those distressed words stamped in the background, and I thought that was really neat. And then this one with the wood grain background and then the splattering, thought that was a really nice example as well. Last but not least, since we looked at the water painter some, here is a card I created that looks very vintage, and I created it with water painters. So what I did with this one, I embossed my, I stamped and embossed my flower image onto vanilla cardstock. And I did that, I did the embossing with clear embossing powder. 
After that, I came in and I added all this color in with my water painters. And after I filled in the flowers, then I went around the edges with some early espresso to create that effect. Thought that turned out really neat. So those are my examples of the distressed projects. Now, if you have any interest in seeing some of the fitting florets, card projects really like to try and give you lots and lots of ideas for ways that you can try techniques, ways you can use different products. And let's look at some of these. Here is a lovely one. I did, I did a technique video on this. I will link to this in the video description below if you wanna take a look at how to create these cards. This one has that lovely flower in the corners and I did a technique with sponge daubers and the stamparatus. Here is a lovely one with that beautiful big die with all the hearts. Love how that turned out. This one, uh, this should have just showed this one with my distressing, I tore the edges. We should have done that on one of our cards. Uh, and then I added some ink around the edges with the blending brushes. So tearing paper, that's another fun idea you can add to your list. Here's a simple one. I just stamped those flowers in the background and added the frame and the leaves and the greeting. Here's one, it looks a little bit aged because I embossed and then added that embossing or that ink over the top. This was a fun one. I was just showing a fun way to use these frames. Uh, otherwise I did not use the framed florets bundle on this one. And here you can see another one with one of those nice frames. So hopefully this gives you some fun ideas for how you can make your cards look distressed and vintage, and maybe also some ways you can use this framed florets bundle if you're interested. So take a look at the product links in the video description below if you wanna take a look at those. Please subscribe if you're new here. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.